welcome to this week's edition of Five Things to Know for Tokyo 2020. My name is Ken Hanscom, and each week I bring you the latest stories and news happening on the road to next summer's games in Tokyo. We're still about 300 days out, but there's a ton of news happening starting with this week, and let's get to number one. We had a pretty big surprise sale this past week at CoSport USA for tickets to Tokyo 2020. Gymnastics, women's individual all around, women's team preliminaries, and several of the individual events all popped up in terms of ticket availability. Very good seats, category A, and some lower categories. In addition, men's gold medal basketball game final, very, very difficult to find. That showed up. Several swimming finals, judo, which has been an unusually difficult one to find during this time. So a really exciting surprise drop from CoSport USA. Some people have asked me, hey Ken, what should we make of this? Is there a lower demand for Tokyo 2020 tickets? You shouldn't take anything away from this particular sale. As CoSport just did the refunds about six to eight weeks ago and are still processing through that backlog, these are likely just additional tickets that showed up. Who knows, there may be some other tickets happening, you know, dropping today, tomorrow, or the next few days. You always have to keep your eyes out when you're hunting for Tokyo 2020 tickets. Let's get on to number two. The NBA made a pretty interesting announcement this past week, and your first reaction might be, Ken, why are you talking about the NBA? Well, the reason I'm talking about it is the NBA talked about the possibility of pushing back their start date, originally for next season, and it originally was supposed to be December 1st, and that way it would allow it to end right in time to give a little nice little gap before Tokyo 2020. But now what Adam Silver and the league is starting to think about is maybe in early 2021, maybe February, especially if they can get fans in the stands during that time. What does that mean for Tokyo 2020? Well, I think it means that if you are looking at buying tickets, especially the gold medal game and spending a lot of money on those, I think you might want to be a little bit cautious at this point. Because as we look at it, if it pushes back six, eight weeks, we could be seeing the NBA finals, the NBA playoffs conflicting directly with Tokyo 2020. Now, there still may be NBA players there, and quite a few of them, but we just don't know how many will it be. And if players that would be going because they've had this, this season that just is finished up in the bubble right now, they're gonna have a compact next season, are they really gonna be willing to go to, to Tokyo uh, for another month to be away from family after a couple of seasons? That's something we really have to watch closely, especially if you're looking at making that big investment. By all accounts though, there will be some NBA players there. You just can't necessarily count on having every single one that will be there. So let's talk about number three. With a ticket drop this week, one of the big things that came out of that was all three sessions of women's qualifications for, for gymnastics came out and were available as part of the drop. The question I got from several people was, Ken, which one do I pick so I can watch Team USA? I want to see Simone Biles. How can I do that? There's really two ways to go about it. The first way is the only sure way to do it buy all three sessions. If you buy all three sessions, you know the USA is gonna end up in one of them. That is the only certain way to do it. There is a way that I've used in the past, it's worked for me, it's worked for me with Team USA Basketball, uh, specifically in both London and Rio. And how that works is, what you may wanna look at as a potential is to see when and what qualification round shows up in the US primetime. As we know, NBC is a big contributor to the overall Olympics, not just Team USA. And as part of that, oftentimes some of the most exciting events happen live in prime time. So if you look at the very first women's qualification event, it's GAR 04, T-O-G-A-R 04, we see that starts at 10 a.m. Tokyo time. There is a likely possibility that because 10 a.m. is 6 p.m. Pacific and 9 p.m. On the, on the East Coast, it's highly probable that Team USA will show up in that. Is it a guarantee? Absolutely not. But I'll tell you, I purchased GAR 4 this past week and I'm gonna take the risk. And if Team USA isn't, isn't in it, I'm still gonna go, I'm still gonna watch. And you can take this other type of approach with other events if you want to, because we are not going to know who's actually in the qualification sessions for four to six months from now. Those generally are only available sometime between 30 and 120 days before the games, and each federation does it slightly differently. Some do lotteries, some do live drafts. There can be a number of different ways the seeding happens in terms of who ends up in what qualification session, in addition to uh, basically uh, coordinating that with the Tokyo committee. So if you're looking to try to do it, the only sure way to buy is to buy all three sessions right now. 
or wait or take a risk like I did and try to time one that might be in the US time zone. So that's it for number three. Let's move on to number four. This week as part of the planning for Tokyo 2020 and 2021, the Tokyo 2020 committee announced 52 different cost cutting measures that are part of trying to make it a more compact and a less expensive game given the delay. What are, what are these measures? I'll give you examples of a couple of them and you'll see the article uh, in the description down below in case you want to read the full item, but it includes reducing delegations of non-athlete participants by 10 to 15%. Reducing things like hospitality and the amount of food and other things that are available include streamlining transportation as well as the other one is reducing both inside and outside decorations. Those small items will add up over time and hopefully will make a difference in terms of really reducing the cost to make it a little bit more uh, the cost effective in terms of the additional costs associated with the one year delay. Now let's move on to number five. The Tokyo 2020 Aquatic Center has set the date for their official grand opening of the Aquatic Center. This was obviously set to happen a long ago before we had COVID-19, but it's now set for October 24th. And now officials, members of the IOC, as well as the Tokyo 2020 will be permitted, as well as residents of Tokyo have been invited to partake. Of course, COVID-19 countermeasures will be in place during the ceremony and the demonstrations are expected to happen. And this particular venue at a cost of roughly $500 million is expected uh, to host international competitions, uh, obviously for Tokyo 2020, but then long after that as well. That's it for this week on five things to know about Tokyo 2020. I'll be with you and check in with you next week and thank you for tuning in.